not everybody has to put all their chips in on Instagram if you're not trying to be an influencer. This seems like it would be like a kind of a controversial topic because this is something that we've learned kind of the hard way of mm -hmm. uh, growing on Instagram and putting a ton of time and energy and effort into it and realizing that the Instagram more we posted, a lot. yeah, and yeah, the more, the more energy and effort we put into it didn't necessarily correlate always with more clients coming in the door. Mm -hmm. And I think that because of how amazing organic content is nowadays, we put so much emphasis thinking that the more organic content social media we put out or content we put out on social media, clients just come f flowing in the door. Yeah. And it's just not that way. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of pros. I don't think you should stop posting on Instagram by any mean. Um, but I do think that there is other avenues that mm -hmm. especially service providers, if you're in e-commerce, I think it's a different conversation, but we're specifically talking to service providers that would get into, which you can kind of jump into your favorite one of all. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it's really important in the slow seasons to not solely focus on Instagram. So having a different avenue of where your traffic is coming from. Yep. So one thing I always tell people is set up your Google My Business account. Yep. This is free marketing for your business for when locals are searching your services near them so that you are the one that pops up. So try to get as many Google reviews as you can. And if you can try to have your clients write the specific service that they received and just the experience that they had, this will help Google understand that you offer hydrofacials, that you offer acne treatments. Um, so that specific treatment and don't obsess over it, of course, don't be like, if you write me, if you write me a review, it can only be yeah. or if I got, it. yeah, yeah or if or I got it. a hydrofacial, um, cause every review is helpful and it will you know, increase your bookings in my opinion. Yep. But so that's called Google my business. And mm -hmm. I, if you haven't set one up already, make sure you do make sure your Google my business, you put time and energy and effort into it, just like you do your Instagram bio. Totally. Uh, it is very important. And like Victoria said, the best way to rank on Google my business is going to be reviews. Mm -hmm. Um, the other, and then uh, photos of course help a lot as well. Um, and the, what else would go into that would be building a website with like that's SEO friendly. So yeah. making sure you have your city all over your website, your services names all over your website, um, using those solid keywords mm -hmm. that does take a little bit more time. And we're rank our websites ranking after a couple of years now and doing really well there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm sure that our Google, my business is what's coming up first. Yeah. Um, because when you're looking up facials near me on Google, Google is going to give you like everyone's seen before the little Google maps tab that yes. kind of comes up first and and then websites if you're looking for a local business. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your Google My Business set up, that will that won't work. And so Google My Business is free. It's a free service offered by Google. You'll have to verify your address. If you're in a salon suite, it works. Trust us, we've done it. <laughs> there is some hoops to kind of, it, it's not really jumping through hoops. It's just a little bit of a headache because they have to send something to you. But be patient. If you don't get it, if it's not, chase it down. It is very, very important to get that set up. Totally. And nowadays, I know we've always spoke about it for the slow seasons, which I think is great. But now I'm just thinking with the way Instagram is moving and grooving. It's um, always changing. It's, yeah, it, it seems like it's really difficult to find in-service clients now mm -hmm. on Instagram. And I don't necessarily think posting seven days a week is finding them anymore. Yeah. I think what your best strategy now on social media is curating better content, mm -hmm. higher quality content that speaks to your audience yeah. better and posting those less because, I would, yeah. Yeah. I would even say that if you're trying to solely focus on building a clientele to, you know, make reels that are targeted to your niche, but like having before and afters, I think yep. that's, that is the biggest thing that people book me yep. for. And I mean, I've heard it time and time again, like even just within this past month is that they're like, I'm so happy I found you. I was so in love with your before and afters. And that's what will get people to book. It's not going to be the reels that are super cool and yep. are cinematic because yep. To be honest, only people in your industry are thinking that's like awesome. I mean, I'm yeah. sure there's clients. I, I think mean, the I clients, clients like it. I just don't know if they always book for that. Yeah, I think they, it, they it will see make it, them book yeah. for a relaxing experience. Yep. But yeah. if somebody's looking for treatment results, they're not. They're like, I could care less about your cinematic video. Yeah. I just want results. Yeah, <laughs> I think for us, it displays a premium brand yeah. for us. Is what I think it does well. It's good to have um, a balance of both, though, right? I completely agree. And before and afters are ha have been the most things that have been commented on 
by mm-hmm. our clients that come in the door. Totally. Um, and I think with that also and being said, before and afters on your Google My Business. Oh yeah, and then also yeah, using those as well because if yeah. those come up first with pictures of your business or a picture of you, mm-hmm. that's a win-win. Win. Totally. Win. Don't Too have many pictures wins. of yourself. Have pictures of your before and after. Have one picture yourself. Yeah, you should few. have you on there because but people like, do want to see. Have like yeah. what people see you first. Yeah. Like don't have it. it. Have a picture of yourself, but then majority. But I'd have a picture of you in the studio. Yeah, in the studio is best. You in your space. So when they walk in, they feel like they already know it. They're comfortable with it already. Exactly. Um, The other thing I was going to mention too, as far as what type of content people should be posting, instead of trying to post the best hooks in the world or the most catchy videos or the best trending audio, is just give value to your clients. Um, Local people are going to see you and follow you if you give a lot of value. If Mm -hmm. you're teaching them about basics of skincare, um, the importance of double cleansing or why they might not be double cleansing. You're teaching them about retinol, um, a simple acid that they should be incorporating in their nightly routine. All those things, uh, if a client is kind of stumbling upon your page and they just feel like my skin is better just finding out this information. Yeah. Like I just learned I was supposed to clean my face in the, or <laughs> clean, cleanse my face in the morning and night, yeah. right? That's really valuable for totally. the regular people walk on the street. And that's mm-hmm. where you're focusing on making content for clients oh, and yeah. not other people in our space. I think the more we've talked about this, this before, but the more free value that you give to people, the more likely that they are willing to book an appointment yep. and they are willing to trust you. Yep. Um, it's something that we really try to do, especially yep. with our information informational videos, um, but just building that source of trust with yep. consumers because it takes a certain, sometimes it takes people a few times to see your post yep. to book an appointment. Yep. And we did that a lot in the beginning. We were doing a lot of informational graphics. We we're doing a lot of before and afters. Um, most of the reels, we we're trying to teach something, the importance of facial and facials, the importance of hydrofacial, explaining what microneedling actually does. Yep. And those are things that were just building trust. And it, it may be long term. We didn't know when that client actually booked an appointment. It might have took the one time mm-hmm. they learned something and they're in the right place at the right mm-hmm. time and went, okay, now's my time to come yeah. in. Um, but yeah, when you're focusing on that more than the kind of numbers of growth, it changes everything. And I think for us in the beginning, we did post a lot. So I can't yeah. say don't do that or you shouldn't. We also had two of us. It's two creative brains creating content at the same time, which is kind of a cheat code. We're very fortunate for that. I know it's yeah. not a normal situation, but all the content that com- was coming out was like, if a client sees this, will they book? Mm-hmm. And now we make content a little bit differently. We found a good niche that people really enjoy watching from yeah. us. It's creative. It's fun. Clients still do enjoy it, right? They're not turning away. They're not leaving yeah. the reel if they see it. Um, but it's a little bit more broad. But in the beginning, it was strictly like we didn't want to put out one piece of content that a client saw and wouldn't book from. We yeah. wanted every piece of content that came out to make them go, I trust her. I'm yeah. going to book with her, <laughs> right? We were using old before and afters, even when you didn't have them at your new spot yourself. We were doing whatever we could to show clients like, hey, just here's everything. Here's yeah. all the information we have. We want your skin to get better. Here's yeah. all the tools if, to do if so. If you look at our Instagram from the be- very beginning, you can see a huge transition. Um, and where we're at right now is a completely different place than we were when we first started. So um, we've actually un- unintentionally grown our Instagram into more of a um, influencer and, in, you know, influencing in a positive way. I hate saying yeah. that, but I mean, it just took a completely different direction and that's okay. I want you to know that you don't have to have a million followers to to gain clients. Yep. I mean, we have 70,000 followers and we're not getting crazy amount of bookings. No. Like in, Instagram is solely, I mean, it's a resource um, that can get you clients, but I wouldn't put all your chips in. And I yep. think that's where people get a lot of disappointment is they feel like they have to make all these crazy reels and, you know, Instagram videos but in reality those it's going to happen organically and when it happens organically it takes more time in my opinion but the long-term gain is so worth it so get on google um and then also i wanted to add when you are posting always add your location so if we're in arizona so we put the local city that we're in every single time so that what some when somebody is searching for a service you should pop up when yep. they are searching for that service. Um, and if that's your where the good content there. comes in play yes. is because if you're able to show up first, have good, totally. it's not good content as far as HD goes. It's just valuable content that if you yeah. come up first for hydrofacial, you better have something there that yeah. people go, 
that's who I want to go see. Totally. And it doesn't, it's not an HD video. Yeah. What it is, it's, it's information. It's you explaining what a hydrofacial mm-hmm. is or you showing them totally. something that they didn't understand fully and they did because of your content. Yeah. And that's what quote unquote good content to me totally. is. Yeah, no, you're so right. I mean, having that mixture of both, you know, having a high quality video or you showcasing your work, you don't have to have fancy equipment and all that, but yeah. just showcasing your work, providing value, giving value for free, um, get to the point. Don't say, okay, so I want to talk about my favorite skincare ingredient. It's like, oh my gosh, get to the point, you yeah, know? Yeah. So like people are scrolling. Yeah. Yes, like, like, what, what are we talking about? When here? you yeah. put out content, make sure that it is engaging and that you sound professional and you get to the point right exactly. away. And as we, uh, yeah, as I transition into another amazing point here, I did want to stop really quickly and say this video, this YouTube video is sponsored by our Patreon optimized aesthetics, which will be right down linked in the description. Victoria will explain everything that's on Optimize Aesthetics if you want to join. Yeah, I know. So we have a community of so many amazing providers. Um, This is a platform where you can request videos, um, videos drop weekly, I mean, monthly, well, weekly. Well, weekly now. Yeah, Yeah, we say monthly, (laughs) but it's almost daily at this point. Yes, and this is a place to connect and really grow your aesthetics business. We are, you know, putting out videos of what has worked for us personally from starting a business from scratch. Um, and just, we also provide stock video footage. So if you are somebody that doesn't have any content, this will give you a chance to have free stock footage for you to create videos until you gain momentum to showcase your services yourself. And, um, you can create content, which we also teach you how to create that content. So the goal of the stock footage is to use it until the point where you can watch enough of our videos to fully understand how you can do it yourself, feel confident and make just as amazing of content, uh, but with you in your own studio. So yeah, thank you to our Patreon for sponsoring this video. It keeps the lights on to continue to do these podcasts and give tons and tons of more free information out. So yeah, click the link in the description to check out our Patreon. You won't won't regret it. Yeah. (laughs) So going back, I want to go back on the idea that the first point we touched on of just like everyone thinking they need to be an influencer, like Mm -hmm. everyone reaching for 10K. And that's kind of just like this myth I kind of just wanted to bunk. And I don't want to sound like pretentious because we've already passed that. But if we went back and started another business right now um, or everything fell apart, we had to start from ground zero and build clientele again, I would do it a lot differently. I Mm -hmm. think I would, like I said, I wouldn't chase to that. And we never really focused on getting to that 10K mark so much. We really just wanted to get clients in the door was the whole purpose. But I think because there's so many bigger influencer estheticians in the space now that are fully booked, I think it's easy for people to correlate 20K to fully booked. Yeah. And for us, I mean, what fully booked it is, we we talk about that on our Patreon a lot too, of what actually fully booked being it really means. But 20K does not mean 20K clients, right? Oh, yeah. 20K is people from across the country, potentially across the world. And as you grow your account, especially in this niche, we have are very open. We're an open book to this information, but it's a lot of other business owners that are following you. So when you get past that 10K mark, it's, it's not, inevitable. yeah, it's not new clients that are constantly following you every day. Instagram starts to see the people who are following you and they start giving your content to those people, which is business owners, estheticians, people yeah. in the beauty I mean, space. If you, if you scroll through your, for, uh, for the, through the reels tab, you'll see other business owners in your space so it's just like like like-minded people like instagram because they know like oh you guys must be connected they're following you you follow some of them um and in the beginning you don't want that Mm -hmm. you know you want to focus on in-person local clients that's why we just emphasize on like from personal experience that followers does not equal clients i want to drill that into your head is that you are going to get bookings off Instagram, but don't put all your chips in Instagram. There's so many other ways there's referrals. And I know that that sounds easier said than done, but connect with other people in your community. Um, it takes a lot of hard work to get there. Um, do these little tiny tips. And I, and I promise you that you will see, you know, results and keep pushing, keep working hard. We're, you know, when we first started, we were struggling. And um, again, I I said this on the live the other day, but being transparent, we were in a one bedroom apartment when we first started the business. And 
um, we're just not getting comfortable again. So um, thank you guys so much for just supporting and being here. We hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, please comment below. We would love to answer them or dive into another video with um, anything you guys have requests yeah. about. Make so, sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. I'm working late.